All righty, so uh, welcome back. Uh, we're going to start with old business. Item number A, consider approval of a supplemental appropriation for the Marina Dredging Project. Staff report, please. Happy to do that, sir. So we have a long staff report in there. It's four pages. We've got a four-page technical memorandum that staff had requested from the consultant. It was primarily for our benefit, but we wanted to show you uh, what we were inquiring about and, and how we were proceeding on this matter. So let me try and chunk it down for you, if I can, a little bit into what are hopefully some easily digestible pieces. What we're asking you to do tonight is to provide a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $700,000 for the Marina Dredging Project, and we're also asking you to confirm the source of those funds. There's a discussion in the fiscal impact as to where it's going to come from. So how did we get here? There, there are really two primary drivers as to why we are asking for this. In the first case, when the bids came in, they were 8% over the engineer's estimate. Now, 8% doesn't sound like a lot of money, but when you apply it against a $3.4 million construction contract, it comes out to be a lot of money. The second situation, which is actually twice as much of the issue, is that as a result of some situations that have gone on throughout the Bay, and, and really the dredgers that are working in the Bay haven't figured out exactly what's happened yet. We're not sure if it's the combination of El Nino and, and some other weather situations. But we experienced 15% greater dredging or, or shoaling than we had anticipated was going to happen. We're actually quite lucky, if, if you want to look at it this way, over in Oakland in their inner harbor, they actually experienced 700% higher shoaling. Yeah, so, so that's telling us that we've got some weird sedimentation, deposition patterns going on. And, and part of the issue that I've written or part of the recommendations I've written in there, and I'll bring it back in future uh, CIP budgets and annual budgets is that I think we're going to need to go back and do surveys, bathymetric surveys of the marina on a three to five year basis. That doesn't stop the shoaling from happen, happening, but it gives us a sense of where it's going and what we're going to be faced with. We, we, there's not much you can do about sedimentation. Right now we've got a dredging project. We're certainly recommending that we continue it. We're recommending that you provide us a supplemental appropriation so that we can finish it. But whereas in years past, we were having our bathymetric surveys done on a 15-year interval. Yeah, a long time. Yeah, we can't do that anymore because I, I – well, I don't – I won't – We you could do it, but I won't – I wouldn't recommend you do it because I, I think it's it's not – the best way to understand what's happening in your harbor is not to wait until you have 50 people lined up outside your door complaining that they're stuck at low tide and they can't get their vessels out. I think we need to be more proactive and study that and look at it. So those are the primary things that are driving this. The, the other thing I want to be really clear about – with you is that in order to proceed with this $700,000 mark, what we have done is we have adjusted the, the dredging depths from where we are now forward. So we've kept the fairways at minus eight, which is always the design, but we have lowered the slips to minus seven, so by a foot. And in consultation with the harbor master, we, we think that's still a reasonable amount. Minus eight would, would have been lovely, would have been fine. But we can really schedule and, and arrange for vessels in there so that that's not a problem. The other good news is that even if you think you're going to go to minus seven, the way dredging is estimated is that you always have a foot of over dredge depth mm -hmm. that is a paid depth for the contractor. And, and the reason is that dredging by its own very nature is imprecise. I guess if I could give you an example, it – the analogy is, imagine that I'm the dredger, and I'm sitting on my boat here, and I'm dredging at the very bottom of my desk. Well, I can't see it. And so he's working this big excavator, and he's got <coughs> a video game type computer working on it. And to make matters even worse, the equipment that you use, it's the shovel that's on the end of an excavator. So it's shaped like a smiley face. And so if you can imagine when a smiley face opens, it comes down. It doesn't pick a perfectly square piece of dirt up. It, it picks a semicircular. And you kind of have to nibble your way back and forth mm -hmm. as you do that. So those two things add a certain level of, of inaccuracy, a certain level of challenge in getting to the depths. And, and, and honestly, in, in the modern day and age, the equipment is getting much better, and they're tied in with GPS, and they are tied in with the computers out on the end of the stick. So they're getting a lot better at it, but it's still challenging that for them. So even if we do go to minus 7 in the slips, which is what we're recommending, I think you're pro for the most of them, you're probably going to end up at minus, minus eight. 8 at mean low, low water just because of the nature of the over, mm -hmm. overdredge. So we're pretty comfortable with that. And with that, I'd be happy to take any questions from the council. All right. So questions for, for Randy? Uh, Lori? So I, I had asked Randy, um, or Duclay, um, yes. about how this would get 
paid for? Um, wh what's the time frame for how this would get passed on to the um, the boaters? I assume at the, the at the marina through the slip fees. Right, exactly, and and I'll actually defer to Stu for okay. the detailed answers on that. Um, we would need to come back with a rate increase to go along with the last rate increase that we that we applied. So you approved two, three 10 percent rate increases. We would need to make that last 10 percent rate increase higher in order to have the timing to pay this off with the rest of the bonds. All right. Any other questions? Um, Terry? I, I can come. Oh, oh, oh. You wanted to ask a question to that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Randy. Sir. So, um, I recall the last time we dredged, we went to minus nine. No, sir. Minus eight was the, the design. Really? Uh, yes, sir. Because I know there was a lot of discussion about going to minus 12 and versus what the expense was mm -hmm. between minus 12 and minus nine. So you're saying it went to minus eight? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. That's that's my question there. You don't have any others, Clark? And uh, just one other one is, is the new sediment. I mean, because you got like bay mud, right? Mm -hmm. What's the density of this new sediment since it moves, seems to move? I, you know, I can't answer that for you, sir. I, I really don't know. Mm. I mean, we, we haven't done that sort of detailed analysis yeah. of it and where it's coming yeah. from. And, and, and primarily we haven't done that because in, in, in consultation with our consultants, it's being experienced everywhere. So if it was only the Brisbane Marina that was experiencing, and I'd certainly be of a mind to say, you know, maybe we ought to go back and do some detailed analysis and see if there wasn't something going on at a project somewhere else that, you know, we're on the receiving end of the sediment. But because it's happening baywide, we're, we're assuming it's the same sediment that we've always got, just in different quantities and at a different rate right now. Yeah. Well, the different um, the point I was getting to is if it's new sediment that it and it's mobile, causing the shoaling and stuff mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. it's probably much lighter than than the atypical bay mud, which is very dense and thick and stuff like that. So it creates this thing, but over a period of time, then it starts a compaction and get turns into that bay mud. But in its infancy, I guess of being mobile. That it you, no, I, I see what you're saying. I, yeah, and I, I, but I think the time period for it to uh, obtain that consistency and that density is mm -hmm. is years upon years upon years because you've got to have a lot of other, the, the other organic materials getting into it and letting it transition like that. Okay, I'm going further with that, but I don't want to really discuss it here because it's not really pertinent. But uh, uh, something I'll talk to you off. Sure, about. sounds great, sir. Okay. Um, I have a question on the alternatives, mm -hmm. alternative number two, right. um, where it talks about the um, truing up the difference between the engineer's estimate and the need to pay for channel marker replacement. Is that the channel marker they damaged? No, ma'am. It's the, uh, there was a supplemental project that the council approved. I think I want to say it was on the order of $16,000. They had, the, the uh, contractor had knocked over one. And then as we were out there examining them, we realized that some of the others were looking a little precarious, so we had a diver survey go down there. And I, 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 off the top of my head, I want to say that there were an additional two or three that needed to be replaced. So th that's those costs. Okay, but has the channel marker that the contractor damaged been replaced? No, he's, they're, they're going to do all of them at the same time as the boats are leaving. Oh, they're going to be doing it. Oh, yes, ma'am, they're going to do the work. Yeah, they're doing theirs for free because... When they, you know, you, you break it, you own it, uh, and then they're going to do R2 when they're mobilized, and we actually get a pretty decent price for it because they already had to come out and do it. And we've intentionally waited until they're leaving because I, I'm sure as you, you've well seen, they're, they're continuing to barge the scows in and out of the marina, and we just don't want to put up brand-new channel markers and let them be a target and because that will be the first one that will get knocked down, right? You'll put it up, and then a week later they'll knock it over. And we just let them do it as they're leaving. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that that was not being appropriated under this. No, no you, so you're correct, ma'am. What I will comment on is, mm -hmm. is a rate increase if there's, um, you know, and I think it's something that we'll need to look at about, you know, how to mobilize it or implement it with the voters. Um, speaking to them, um, most of them feel that we are still quite the bargain comparatively to other marinas that 
are having silting problems. Uh, San Leandro is going to be abandoning their yeah, marina exactly because it has silted in and they're going to build bayfront condos there. <laughs> they're they're they are going to sort of build bayfront condos, but uh, you know we we do have a good reputation within the community, and uh, our boaters tend to really appreciate that this dredging project is going forward. I'm disappointed it's going so much over budget, but I'm glad that it's being done. Yes, ma'am, we all are. Thank you very much for the kind words. Madison, any questions? For I don't have any questions. All right. Um, I'll make a motion. Oh, you have questions. Let me just say. Um, you know what? I'm good. So. Um, I'll make a motion to approve. Supplemental appropriation for marina dredging. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And, and, and may, may I ask just a clarifying question, because we do need direction on, on, on where the funds are coming from. Is that, are, are you going to leave it to staff's discretion to take it from either the general fund or the utility fund, and that, and then when we bring back the rate increase, we'll also bring back that the loan is going to be paid back with interest? To the general fund or the utility fund? Is that, uh, is that Stuart, do you I, have any? Uh, I, I don't think you need to make a decision on one tonight. Okay. Because um, I think we'll, we'll bring a resolution back to you on that and a recommendation. I oh, think we're, okay. we're, we're leaning towards the general fund in terms of a recommendation, but we'll we'll probably bring that back in September. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Item B under old business discuss and give direction to staff on choosing <coughs> a rate for Peninsula Clean Energy Rate Plan. For city facilities and for citywide options. Um, before we go into that item, can I get a motion to extend the meeting to uh, 11 o'clock? I'll make that. So move. Second. In. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. So Aye. for the Peninsula Clean Energy, the city council has an option to either take the regular rate from Peninsula Clean Energy and what that does is it reduces our costs to the to the city by about 5% for the generation portion. The generation portion for a large number of our bills is about 50% of the overall cost of electricity. There's a chart in the middle of the page that shows that currently we use about one and a half million kilowatt hours a year of electricity in the city. The current cost to us is about 290,000. The cost of generation is about $145,000. Uh, by going to the, low, the first tier of the Peninsula, Peninsula Clean Energy, the expected cost of generation would be $137,750, and we'd save about $7,250. That first level of generation from Peninsula Clean Energy um, it was, it's 50% renewable and 75% carbon-free energy. That compares to the current PG&E mix, which is 30% renewable and 58% carbon-free. So we're already doing, by just going to the PCE program, we would be doing better in both the <laughs> renewable generation and the carbon-free generation. If the city council decides to go to 100% renewable, which has been the conversation with the city council recently, the cost of that is about one penny more per kilowatt hour than the regular PCE rate. So that would raise the cost about $15,000 from the $137,750. Uh, so the net cost to the city from the current rates that we're paying, if we go to the 100% renewable, is $7,750, about $7,750 more than we pay today for energy. Uh, you know, one of the goals that the City Council has talked about, and you know, what I talk about is the purpose of going to the PCE and making that decision, is we want to make sure that we are environmentally sustainable, or as Goal said, ecologically sustainable, and while still being fiscally prudent. Uh, you know, from a staff's perspective, 100% renewable is more ecologically sustainable than the mix, even the regular PCE mix. And then the question comes is, does the $7,750 make a major difference in the general fund or the other funds that will be uh, taking it up, and it's a very small portion of the overall cost. So, you know, the City Council may want to decide that going to 100% renewable beats both of those goals. 
Um, the other question that is out there is do you want to automatically enroll the rest of the city into the 100% renewable rate? It, it will cost more than what current rate payers are paying in their PG&E bills. There is a process for individuals to opt into the renewable energy portion, uh, and that will they will get that information from the P, from PCE. Uh, so you know the the question <coughs> would be is if you as a city council want to opt everybody in, you could. Uh, one town has done that on the peninsula, and that is Portola Valley. Uh, but it is the only town that has done it to this to this point in time. Uh, but the question for me, I think we should ask ourselves at that point is what kind of process should we go through in informing the city um, residents and the businesses that this is what we are doing. I know that the process that we took when we were doing the plastic bag, bag ordinance or the, the container ordinance was a few months at a time and also with the smoking ordinance in multi-residentials that also I think is a three to six month process. And we are, they are looking at making their decision, they're looking at having everybody online in their first phase, October 1st. So if you take a three to six month process to put people into the higher 100% renewable, that would be beyond the date that they would have hit for their October, and they'll already be contacting customers by then. So from that perspective, I think they're going to be ahead of us in making that kind of a process to inform our, inform their customers and Brisbane. Yeah, any questions? No, I, I sit on the Peninsula Clean Energy Board, so I can I can tell you, um, you know, like Stuart said, a, num a number of the cities are considering having the municipal accounts on the 100% renewable opt-in, um, and I asked staff to find out from the, um, the county office of sustainability which other cities were considering it or have done it, and um, so far, Millbrae and Portola Valley have opted in for their municipal accounts, and Woodside, San Mateo County, Half Moon Bay, Atherton, and Menlo Park are also considering it like we are. Um, I think that it sets a good example to be environmentally sustainable. It meets our goals. Um, it's not a significant impact on our budget to have our municipal accounts online. Um, as to all customer accounts, you know, we talked about that at the at the Peninsula Clean Energy Board meetings, and you know, there really, there wasn't a, a consensus around that issue. You know, it, on the one hand, you know, you want to promote environmental sustainability, but on the other hand, community choice aggregation is about community members having choice, and do we want to make that choice for the community? Encouraging them is one thing, but cho you know, taking. You know, it wouldn't be taking that choice away, but it would be having them opt in, and then if they want to opt out, they have to go on the website or call the um, call center and say, I want to opt back down to the default setting. So I feel a little more ambivalent about that. I, I hope that if, I'm, as a city, we put our municipal account online and we do some outreach um, to our residents that we can encourage them to opt up. But I would leave it at that. <laughs> I feel the so same way. I think, you know, we've all kind of talked about this before, so in the, in the interest of time, or do you think that we would all agree that the city should, you know? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think the city should. I, I say yes on that. I say no on the citizens. Great. I don't want to make that choice for individuals. I mean, personally, right now, I don't buy my electricity or gas from PG&E, but I get hosed on delivery charges. So I'm probably paying a lot more than what I was, because I know my energy bill a couple of years ago averaged like 40 bucks, and now it's like 75. And I'm not using nothing different. Okay. They're just <clears throat> I delivery charges. Yeah, I think that I think that I I would be in support of, of putting municipal accounts on the 100% renewable. Um, I think businesses and the entire city shouldn't, because I think that if it's a bigger change for their bill than going on to, they would be more likely to pick up the phone and opt out and go back to PG&E. Mm. Um, and so you don't want them to have a reason to pick up that phone and make that switch. You want them to be seamless. And I think that as um, word gets out and it is seamless that six months or a year down the road that 
you'd have a better chance of talking the businesses into making the change and that it isn't a huge impact. And, you know, in the very end, if everyone, all the cities opted in and opted all their people in, would they have enough 100% renewable to meet the demand? Well, the, the contracts are going to be based on the, the demand. So that's why they're doing this now before we, um, you know, set all the pricing or w before we get all the contracts in place. And some and the contracts will get renegotiated, you know, that I forget what the term is, but I wouldn't worry about the demand. I mean, the, the demand will, or the, the, the supply, I mean, I think it will be able to meet whatever the demand is. Um, and the, the, the cost for the 100% renewable energy is only one cent per kilowatt hour more than the regular PCE rate, um, which is not all that significant for a residential customer, maybe more for a business. I think it's maybe a few dollars more a month. Um, but in the end of the year, um, PG&E may be reducing its rates, and so PCE may be reducing its rates to be competitive as well. Mm -hmm. So um, the rates will, you know, be revisited, and, you know, I, I, I agree with, with what you've said. I think we should yeah. vote. So, so, Lori, is the county doing anything to help cities to promote 100% use? The counties or PCE? Or the PCE. The county, well, yeah, yeah the, yeah, I mean, the, the county both. Office of I mean, Sustainability. Oh. Yeah, so they're doing a whole marketing and outreach effort um, through, you know, these next few months at least. Um, and, yeah, they'll be explaining the different um, options. And, you know, of course, the goal is to, to get more renewable energy. So. I, I believe they will be promoting that option. Um, and we've actually talked about, um, you know, on the website, you know, to, we've jokingly said, don't put the opt-out button at the top of the web, <laughs> at the website, you know, put it there, but don't make it, you know, you know, to make it so that people can opt out of the program, but it's not like the first thing you see when you log on, when you, when you pull up the website. Um, so there's, yeah, there's going to be an extensive outreach. Okay. So, um, I guess you have direction, Stuart? Yes. I think there was a vote of 5-0 to opt into the 100%, and the vote was not to put the whole city into it. Okay. Do we need to do a motion for that, or? Um? No. Yeah. Yes. That's a very good idea. Oh, okay. Motion. You'd like a motion? I'll make a motion. All right, motion. so do we have a second? The attorney will. Second. Work. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> All right, new business. Item A, review the proposed policy to name parks and recreation facilities within the city of Brisbane and make it If you would like, we could postpone this till September and because what the issue is going to be naming okay. the skateboard park. Okay, let's postpone. Okay. That'll Thank you. Work. And we did item B already. C, consider approval city employee uh, memorandums of understanding and employment contracts. Yes, you have a number of. Um, uh, can, can you, can you uh, skip it? I got a question for the uh, city attorney, if you don't mind. Can I make a motion and, and include all these resolutions in one motion? Yes. Yes, I and mean, you also need to make a motion to include the city manager's right. agreement as well, which was put in front of you tonight. A separate, uh, a separate motion on that one? Well, I, I didn't mean, are we doing a resolution for that? Yes. Yeah. There's, there's a, a separate resolution for the city manager's uh, uh, second amendment to that contract, but if you want to make a, if you want to do it in one fell swoop to approve resolution number 2016-24 through 2016-32. 31. Yeah, oh, okay. D then, yeah, do 24 through 31 as one and then do uh, 2016 34 as a separate one. Okay. Okay. Then so I'd like to make a motion. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. Is there any council discussion? Right. So these are all of our groups except for the fire and fire. management. Mm -hmm. And mid management. Yes. It's a matter of time. We'll bring those back in September. Okay. Call the question. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion to approve Second Amendment to the Employment Agreement with City Manager. Uh, resolution 2016-34. Right. Okay, we have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I thought we had included that in the last one. No, we, we did that separate because it was out of order. 
Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, staff report, city manager's report on, on upcoming activities. The, the only item I really have tonight um, is just to, to let you know that we are working um, uh, at the mayor's direction um, with the airport, San Francisco airport, to try to do a workshop um, on the noise abatement issue. Mm -hmm. um, it will probably be uh, sometime in um, August or September, I think. Lori had suggested it be after school is back in session, so that make sure that uh, we have um, parents. So as soon as we get that information together, we'll we'll get that out to you. But it, it may happen before your next meeting in September, so I want you to be aware of that. Yeah, so I had um, reached out to Bert Ganong from the Noise Abatement Office to do the workshop. He has been busy. Um, he's also been dealing with the other um, body that's dealing with noise issues in the southern part of the county as well as Santa Clara and Santa Cruz County. Um, the the roundtable does have a meeting, a roundtable meeting on um, August 3rd, August 3rd, August 2nd, and they will be going over different packages to recommend to the FAA. Um, I was hoping that we would do the meeting prior to that so that then the city could provide some feedback, but I got some, <laughs> some pushback from residents saying that's not enough time. And so we could have this workshop after the roundtable has already given some guidance to the FAA. So, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I, I know we've talked about doing a workshop and trying to get that going, but, you know, if you're going to do a workshop, you want to have all your ducks in a row. You want to have information that then you can provide to the citizens so that they can understand what various options are, are available. You, you don't want to just have a workshop so people can vent. You want to have a workshop so people can be constructive in, in making uh, sound decisions. So, um, I, you know, I mean, we can do the workshop in, in, in August if that is more appropriate for everybody to get a greater participation. But there are definitely some folks out there that have been very involved with this. And I'm sure if we, I don't know, and maybe it's just not enough time to do something next week. Or we could do like a little mini one and then do a bigger workshop later so well I, I know I'd, I'd like to attend the workshop and I know I would not be available um, until after August 17th um, right. and I know I'm, I'm probably speaking also for a lot of other families who take you know vacation in August so I think you know it's a it's an issue that impacts the community as a whole and I think it should be given enough notice and put at a time where people are likely to, you know, more people can are likely to attend, and I'd like to be there. Um, you know, I, I saw the emails, and I, I understand that, you know, several members of the community wanted to be as soon as possible. Um, and, and I think, you know, I, I agree that, you know, we need to have the data, and I'd like to have, I'd like to be there, and I hope that other people would be able to, I think more people would be able to attend later in the summer. I think it's hard to put something on in the next few weeks. So if, if you want to have... Um, a meeting with some of the people that want the concerns to go in the recommendation coming from the round table then perhaps if you wanted to have a mini meeting that would work on a lower scale um, you may not get as broad a participation but it, it at least you the public would get the um, perception that those recommendations or what was discussed at the workshop would be going back to the round table to be included in their discussion. Yes. Um, so um, either way I think would work and you know it's hard to have a workshop on something that's already been recommended. Yeah I agree but yeah so maybe we'll do that uh, Clay and try and schedule some kind of mini meeting with Bert to go over the, the various packages that are being recommended by the uh, consultant of the roundtable that pertain to Brisbane. And so you, you want to you do that, try to do that the last week of July then? And uh, this, this, actually this upcoming week, because I think the following week Bert couldn't make it, but this upcoming week he can. Um, okay, I mean, he, he, his, his bounce back email was that he wasn't going to be available until Monday. Yeah, so next week he's available, and then he's out again the following 
okay. week. So. Um, um, all right. Well, we'll we'll. Um, I'm 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 actually going to be gone next week myself. So Stuart's aware of all. Okay. This. Yeah, and, and I'll coordinate with. There's a roundtable. I mean, there's an airplane noise group, and I'll coordinate with those. Okay. Um, constituents. But Stuart, Stuart will handle it on the staff level. Okay. I did get a note from one of my staff members to just mention that the citywide garage sale is uh, yeah. this weekend. Uh, there will be a um, barbecue by the, um, the Lions Club, and then tomorrow night is Busta Groove, the concert in the parks. All right, Busta. All right. So next item is um, county or mayor council matters, countywide assignments, subcommittee reports. Um, I have one. Okay. Uh, so. Well, the library um, committee, the stakeholder group, we met yesterday um, with the <coughs> with the designers, and we got to see a, a conceptual design based on the feedback they received from the stakeholder groups, and was really exciting. Um, they basically said that the two themes that they heard the most were the mountain and the community that were important to our to our town our town. So what? What they're aiming to do with the design um, is to bring the outdoors inside um, to be able to capture the views of the mountain, um, to have materials that, um, you know, were matching that theme and also um, had character and, you know, were light and airy. And it was, it was similar to what they had presented previously, but they, what they have suggested is that the the inner, the, the main passageway gets gets shortened so that you can see more directly into the back courtyard, bring in more light, um, and to combine the community room with the teen area um, so that it can be used to have more functionality. Um, so it's really exciting. Um, and they said that the there's going to be a public meeting on August 25th from 6 to 8 p.m. It's going to, going to be at the community center under the existing library. Um, there's also going to be a park, uh, a booth at Day in the Park in October where the architects will be present. And it'll come back to the city council um, with schematics that are proposed in October. So looking forward to more on that yeah. front. Uh, sounds like fun. Yeah. And that was it for me. Madison, I had a meeting uh, last night with staff and uh, the Complete Street Safety Committee and uh, just basically to listen to concerns and go over the work program, proposed work program, and uh, come up with some uh, ideas about how we can move forward in a healthy way, Sounds in good. a complete street way. <laughs> it was a great all. meeting. All right, good. Okay. You know, our water meeting got canceled in my Airport land use meeting got canceled, so I don't think I have anything to report. All right. Yeah. Good, you got 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Did we have an economic development? <laughs> oh, um, no, we had that meeting with Jasmine. You, you did, it was just the update from Mitch. Oh, we did. You're right. That's right. Did. Yeah. So yeah. So Mitch gave us uh, an update on you know economic development opportunities and a lot of stuff happening in in Brisbane and you know whether it's in the industrial park or out at Sierra Point so um, yeah the, the 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 occupancy rate out at uh, Sierra Point um, you know with the diamond buildings I mean they, they were at like 60 percent for the longest time and now there there's a couple deals that are gonna go through and they're gonna be at 90 percent for both those buildings uh, probably next uh, next month perhaps so yeah, uh, oh, I, I I do have one comment. No, sure. The uh, Pokemon Go. We have sites at the marina. Mm, we are even at the park. Emoji too. places. Yeah, they're, they're, Hopefully, they're, people won't walk into the water. The they the have been day. they have been out there stomping on the ground doing strange things, and people have been asking what they're doing and driving through with their cell phones. It's been quite entertaining to Did see you hear them. though what happened in San Diego two people walked off a cliff uh, there's been a lot of very interesting <laughs> there's been that people that have been trying to get out onto the docks <laughs> for them also so they were just injured not gravely but yeah good 
There's one at the park, too. too. A lot of them are at the park, and some of them are at the fire hydrants, which I think is really interesting. My brother's like, I'm going to the fire hydrants to get the Pokemon. I'm like, I could never get you to go there before. He's like, well, the Pokemon are there now, so... (laughs) I don't get any of it. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, we need to do the vote, voting delegate. Uh, we have the the part side uh, follow up discussion. So um, we're Let's see. Th- this was really your request. So it, you had the workshop um, back a um, month ago or so, and the council requested to be put on an agenda for. Uh, council members to have any further comment um, the process is moving forward in terms of the consultant and uh, will be coming forward to um, the Planning Commission and then to the uh, uh, back to the City Council you know for any final decisions I think that I would like to see that we have a City Council discussion on Parkside after we we had the initial where we sort of looked at a B and C and which we liked better, and I think that because they were so different from each other that we, it sort of seemed that we were all going with A, or the, or the, the least change, and I think that it might be good if we had a public meeting with the council to find out what the public would like to see before we really well, I think that's and not right. necessarily with the well, consultant, but with yeah. the public and the city council. Yeah. I think that's what the intent of this is, this mm-hmm. item, but perhaps we need a staff report and so that the public is more aware and we can put it on the Well, this isn't, this isn't this isn't for, you know, follow up discussion. We can't really because it's not a public hearing and it's not it. We can't really discuss it. Well, we can it's on the that. agenda. I mean, you can discuss it. I mean, the, the, uh, what I am hearing from you is is a another um, kind of workshop, um, and I mean, John may want to input on this. I, it, it, I mean, we do have a consultant with a scope of work, and we do have a a um, scope of work that's working its way through. Then we'll come back to the council. If you want to change that scope of work, that that's going to cost money, um, and we would have to renegotiate the the the, the, the consultant contract um, and um, you know I, I don't know all that that would involve at this point but I mean it's it's you know when you adopt you know when you adopt contracts with with consultants there's always a scope of work and there's a time frame and you know that that's what the staff follows in terms of bringing something through and um, I think where Terry's probably coming yeah. from is that the product that they presented to us was very underwhelming. I, 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 <laughs> I appreciate that, but you still, you know, I mean, you still have a process here. Yeah. So, you know, and it, and it will, it all obviously will come back to the council in, in the end after it goes through the planning commission, and you will, um, um, you know, have that opportunity to have your hearing or hearings at that point in time and decide ultimately what you what you want to do so I am on the same page with Terry I don't think the consultant really needs to be there I mean I don't think well, I'm, I'm gonna have to stop you there because you can, I mean the, the, the suggest that you're gonna continue a process with a consultant that's got deliverables including the form based codes and then you're going to exclude them from participating in your decision-making process is just gonna be chaotic I mean, so, it's just, that's just not going to work. So they can be there, but I don't, I mean, if we need to pay them extra to be at that meeting, I think that what, I agree with what Terry's saying. I think, you know, we didn't get to to discuss with each other how we felt about each of the plans. We didn't get to absorb the plans at that time. I don't think now is the appropriate time to do that. It's very late in the evening. We don't have the plans here to to look at. I think that the public would probably like to comment on the plans, and not a lot of that happened because most of them commented. Um, like I, I think that a lot of the the community is, ab- is absorbed those plans too. I think we knew, do need to have another meeting that has a public hearing where people can give some final comments and we can actually talk about what we do and don't like about the plans and maybe some of us may suggest alternatives to the plans. And then if the consultant is there, then obviously they can, when the consultant is there, they can take that feedback and maybe craft a final 
plan that we like that we would then be giving to the Planning Commission, but I think it's too late for us to do that now, and I don't think that at this hour the public obviously is not able to participate on that. Yes. Well, I guess that's a fundamental question, whether you want to craft the plan before you send it to the Planning Commission. That's not what's, you know, been contemplated to date, but, you know, I mean, that's a real departure from what the contract is. I mean, ultimately, I think, you know, it's going to it's going to come back to you through the Planning Commission, like most planning issues, and they're going to make their recommendation to you based on the input that the consultant has got to, to, the, to date, and they're going to craft a recommendation, and then it's going to come to you basically where you can do what with that would whatever you want to do I mean you can accept it you could change it completely you can change it a little can bit I, so the community have two opportunities to comment on it one is at the Planning Commission hearings and one is when it comes back to the City Council right, right. And, and my guess is that that you know those those could be multiple meetings too and, and there also be again that online component we've been using that quite a bit um, that'll be another opportunity for public um, feedback on the on the concepts I Respectfully, I would like to make the suggestion that on September 1st meeting that we designate a slot early in the evening to show on the screen the three different proposals from that we already got and discuss them where we can have a discussion about what we liked, what we didn't like, what we want to see, and that we have that opportunity to have an early discussion where we look at those things after having had time to look at them because those that weren't on the subcommittee didn't or who didn't have a chance to look at those before the meeting was given to us was all gut reaction and gut reaction isn't necessarily the best reaction to have and I don't think gut reaction is the reaction to or the, the method to send it to the Planning Commission without having those incorporated. So I would like to have us as a council designate half an hour or an hour to look at those, discuss it. If the, if the uh, um, consultant wants to be there and participate, fine. If they don't want to be there and participate, they can watch that half an hour segment on, on online. But I think that I think it would be good for us to sort of give our impressions and really get it out what we saw after being able to discuss it. So I'm not saying we need to have, you know, a full-blown three-hour workshop, but I do think we need to have something where after we've seen what the drawings were and what the concept was, that if there's some concept we would like to be included or excluded, that we have that opportunity as a council to do that. I think you both said something similar back when we had it, so. Yeah, I think that. Well, I, I think we can probably make something like that work. I mean, what? I, although I heard two different things there, actually. I, I heard Madison say, basically, the craft the plan that we sent to the Planning Commission. I heard Terry say for the council to comment on and provide some direction. So I, those are I more want to comment, but like you know, there there are specifics that I have ideas about. Right. I don't I, obviously I'm not the expert. I can't craft a plan. I don't have I don't have the, that expertise. Um, but there are like ideas of maybe how the density is in some area that I may or may not like, and I want to have the ability to comment on that and say, hey, this is something that how maybe I'd like to see this space used. And of course, they can take that back and um, and refine that because that's what we hired them to do. Um, so I'm sorry that that, okay. <laughs> that came out. Well, what, what you're saying now to me sounds more like what Terry was Yeah, saying. yeah. We're on the same page. So, um, you know, we'll, uh, I guess we'll have to sit down and figure out what this means in terms of um, the budget and the, um, the, uh, um, the contract and I'll just have to report that back to you. And then we'll put it on the, we can put it on the September 1st agenda. Yeah, well, you know, I think like what Terry was saying, I mean, perhaps we don't need to have the consultant as an additional amendment to their, 
to their contract. I mean, it would be really, I think it, it's helpful it, though. It, well, the concept well, plans. Well, let me work with yeah, staff and kind of, consultant. Yeah. I guess. I mean, they might need I an mean, explanation. You, you, you know, let's get real. You figure out it's the 11, 11 right now, so. Uh, then a little delirious. We'll, we'll, we'll try to do this in the least cost impact way. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, uh, item D, designation of voting delegate and alternate for Le California City's annual conference in October. And you, I, you could delay this till September too, because it's not until October. Well, I mean, I, well, I'm, I'm, not not the, so I'm, I'm gonna go, so okay. I'll be the delegate. Okay, who's uh, going? I'm, That's easy. I'm hoping to go. Great, another one. No, no, you're it. I can you be the alternate. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay, done. All right, Done. and then um, set a date for workshop for SB 415 election options. That's just um, basically meeting prior to a council meeting, right? That's what you're talking about. That was our about. thought. Yeah. yeah, so we can just do it uh, September 1st and, and meet uh, half an hour prior to uh, our council meeting. That's discuss uh, the terms <laughs> and shifting the terms. Yeah, yeah. I think we need uh, Do we need more than an hour? I mean, more than a half No, an no, hour? I'm, I'm just saying from if we're doing this on September 1st with regards to the park side and you want a half hour for this, you know, we're having six weeks in between meetings that, you know, there might be a whole lot of stuff on the agenda. Yeah, I, I well, think this, we is have a council have member who that. won't be there on the 15th, so if oh. you don't do it the 1st, you're going to push it off until the October. Do we care? Um, I don't know. You may, or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it, it kind of depends on when you want to, you know, uh, look at implementing this. I mean, October is probably not going to be a problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you I'm want to push it off to October. Yeah. I'm just oh, okay. Whatever. Right. I mean, I, unless, yeah, okay. People might have issues. <laughs> so yes. the, the first meeting of October? Uh, yeah, sure. or not. Okay. <laughs> okay. Old communications number two. No one's out there. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn in um, memory of uh, the slain officers in Dallas as well as the tragic incident in Nice. I will make that motion. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah.